Angela, you're there. Can you hear us? Yes, I'm here. I can okay. hear. So trigonometry. Yes, I promised that we need to look at everything to do with trigonometry. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> so trigonometry. So <clears throat> let's start. So there are certain we want to look at to just investigate things that we need to know about this. Properties of sine theta, I'm sure we all know that sine theta can only be between one and, <coughs> and negative one. <coughs> the range of sine theta and everyone knows how to draw the, the curve, which are supposed to know how to draw the curve of sine theta. But what I want to look at is what happens if I have y is equal to sine a theta like this. By a theta, I mean a can be any number, any integer or a fraction. For example, if I have y is equal to sine 2x, how does that affect our general graph? Was our general graph of sine theta, which we agree for to use angles 90, 180, 270, 360. Now, if you draw that graph, we know that 90 is 0 there, negative 1, then back to 0 then. So it's an easy curve. Okay. But now we want to look at the effect of this. So this is the general graph of y is equal to sine theta. What if we say y is equal to sine 2 theta? What happens to the amplitude? Because I'm sure you know that the wavelength there. One wavelength huh, is 360 degrees, one complete wave. But what happens now if we say y is equal to sine two theta? Sine two theta. <coughs> so let's look at this. If you say sine 90, 90 times two becomes 180, can you see that? So if I was to redraw this graph, the amplitude remains the same. So this never affects the amplitude. It affects only the wavelength of the graph. <coughs> it doesn't affect the amplitude. The amplitude will remain like, will remain this. Those whatever value you put the cos sine theta will always be between one and negative one. So the amplitude does not change, but the wavelength changes. Because sine 90 is one, but if it's sine 45, if I put sine, if x is equal to 45 degrees, you see that half there. So 45 degrees, which is pi over two, or 45 degrees there, that's where it's going to be one. Can you see that? Then when you say sine 90, you're now saying sine 180, which will be zero like this. Okay? Then you find that half of this between, between this and that. Because now if you have 135, if you say 135 times 2, it gives you 270. So your negative 1 there comes there. But then this one comes there. So you have a complete wave. If I was to put it that way. You have a complete wave there. Like this. You have a complete wave. Because you're saying sine 2... Okay, I hope it's making sense there. <coughs> so... Instead of having one wave here, I'm going to have, okay, like this. That's what I mean. Y is equal to sine two theta. <clears throat> so in general, okay, I wanted to show you this. It affects, so the amplitude is equal, remember your amplitude is equal to two pi. Your amplitude is equal to two pi divided by whatever A is. Huh? I'll explain just now, it will make sense. The amplitude of this wave is always given by lambda is equal to two pi divided by whatever A is there. If A is two, it means I will have two complete waves in a 360, in a revolution there. If an A is three, I will have three complete waves. I'll show you just now. So we said that we have discovered that lambda is equal to two pi 
over a. So if I have sine three x, I want to draw the sine of sine three x. So look at this. If I was to do, I know that this is so lambda is actually equal to two pi. So in terms of if it was in terms of degrees, it's three sixty divided by three. Was this is three, and I get what one what one twenty. Can you see that? Which means if I draw my wave, what's going to guide me is that at 120, I will have a complete wave. At another 120, which is 240, I will have a complete wave. At another, so I will have three complete waves like that. And the half of that wavelength is going to be at 60 degrees like that. That's why I'm going to have half of my wave. Well, half of my complete wave is going to be there. That's what I mean. Okay, is that making sense there? So I'm saying I'm having a complete wave like this and that. Then I'll have another one. So to draw this now, let me just show you how you do this. To draw a proper graph like this. We now know that it's three complete waves. Okay, forgive me there, my lines, my meant to be correct, straight as you want it. So 120 degrees, 240 degrees, then 360 degrees. Half of 20, half of that is 60 degrees. Uh, 60 plus another 60 there, it's 180, I think. Then if you add uh, 60 there, that's 300. Okay, let's do it like this. Then I call our normal wave like this. So now, even if we use the calculator, <clears throat> remember we know that sine zero is zero. It's not affected by this. Huh? But remember, our sine, where we were getting one was on sine 90. <clears throat> Negative one. Let's do it with this. Huh? <clears throat> now, if you do sine, so this is going to be zero there. Well, this is three times 60, which is sine 180. And we know that sine 80 is what? It's that. And the half of 60 is what? It's 30 degrees. So look at this. 30 times three is 90. And we know that sine 90 was what? Was one. That's what I meant by half, like this. Then half of this is at 90 there. That's where you're going to have the minus one like this, complete wave. Then half of this, is 150. So at 150, I'm going to have one like this. Then there, like this. Then half of this, which is 210, that's where I'm going to have my negative one like this. Then half of this between this, which is 270, that's where I'm going to have my positive one like this. Okay, then the same here, 330. So first complete wave, second complete wave, three complete waves. I hope it's making sense. Making sense, uh, Angela? So we are guided by this. Pi is equal to two, uh, theta, sorry, lambda, which is the wavelength, is equal to two pi divided by A. And I said this is general curve sine AX whatever A is. <clears throat> so what if I have this? I have Y is equal to sine half X. Let's use the same formula. I said lambda is equal to two pi over A. Our A here is half. So I'm going to say lambda is equal to two pi divided by what? By half. And if you do that, you find that lambda is actually equal to four what? To four pi. So this time now, we are, it means on 360, I'll have half, half of the wave. Huh? Suppose this is three times, this. pi is 180. So 180 times four, so I'm sure you get 720. So it means I'll only have a complete wave at seven what? At 720. Is that clear? You guys are quiet. Yeah, what is making sense? Maxine, they're making sense. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Then what if now we say y is equal to a sine x? 
So this one now, when we do this, this so for Corsa, we want to revise that it's just the same. Now, if we do this, <clears throat> this affects the amplitude. It either increases or decreases the amplitude, but the wavelength stays the same. So for example, if I have y is equal to two psi x, what simply changes the, the, uh, the phase difference remains the same. So 180, 270, 360. So if you do, so you find that now we said zero, but if you now do sign 90 there, gives you one times two. So it's, it goes to two, that's what I mean. The amplitude increases. If it does half, it decreases by half. So that's, that's the effect. But in terms of the general curve, it's just the same curve. Because this, like that, it's just the same. Then this goes to minus two like this. So the effect of this affects the amplitude. Clear? It affects the amplitude. Okay. Now, then the other thing that you need to know is if I have A is equal to sine, Y is equal to sine brackets theta plus A, or Y is equal to brackets sine theta minus A. This one moves your graphs either to the left or to the right by whatever A is. For example, if I have Y is equal to sine brackets, theta minus 90 degrees. I have to put it that way. Okay. I, want, I will just show you quickly what happens. We know that sine, sine zero is zero. Sine zero degrees is zero, okay? But if you now we do sine zero, when theta is zero, this becomes sine minus what? Minus 90. So it will only become zero when sine is equal to what? When sine is equal to 90 degrees. Because when you have 90 degrees, there will be 90 minus 90, then you are there. So it means you are moving, you see? Because I'm saying at zero degrees there, if you do zero, it will be minus 90. And what's sine minus 90 from my calculator? What's sine minus 90, Tawana, from your calculator? When theta is equal to zero, what's sine minus 90? You guys don't have calculators. Minus it's minus. negative one. It's minus. Negative one. Huh? So you see your graph is starting here. Like this. And when it's 90, that's when it's coming to what? To zero. Like this. Because it's 90 minus 90, which is sine zero like this. Can you see that your graph has been moved, okay? That makes sense. It has been, it has been shifted. We have shifted the graph 90 by 90 degrees huh? or by pi over two to the what? Makes sense. Okay. Then we have 180. 180 to be sine 90, which would be one day, like this. Okay. Then 270, I'm sure I guess it's correct that it would be like this. Then you're 90 here, negative one. Like this. So we have shifted our normal graph. Because our normal graph is this one will be sh shifts and this will, will sign nine, sign zero is supposed to come there. But we have shifted this whole graph here. If you remember our graph is like this. Like this, we we're saying sine 90, sine 91, 270, sorry, 180, 270, sine 360. But now you see what's happening. We have shifted the graph. Okay, remember this was 90 degrees. So you need to know the effect of this and the effect of this. It's just moving your graph to the left and to the right. It's not difficult. <clears throat> Then the other thing, I'm not sure how you learn it at school, you need to know the properties of, remember from what you have said, where is sign positive? Where is sign positive? 
in which quadrant? So this is your first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. I can use my normal graph of sine theta, which I said is like this. Okay. My diagram may not be perfect. So this is 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. So sine, this is the first quadrant. I mean the first 90 degree. Then this is the second quadrant. So sine is positive in the first quadrant and positive in the second quadrant. How does that help? It helps us to know values of angles. For example, if I say sine 20 degrees, sine 20 degrees is this acute angle like this. 20 degrees. I can draw, because it's also positive, I can draw another 20 degrees there. But when I'm finding this 20 degrees, I move clockwise from this point. So it means sine 20 degrees is also equal to sine 180 minus 20 degrees, which is sine what? Sine 160. Does that make sense? Because I'm using properties of these quadrants. If I was to do sine, um let's say 300 and sorry sine 215 degrees like this so <coughs> i know that this is in the negative quadrant so it's negative from your calculator you get a negative but look at this so if i've done 180 all the way to this i can say 215 minus 180 what do you get what's 250 minus 118 35 degrees, huh? Are we agreeing? Yes, 35 degrees. So look at this. So it's 35 degrees like this, or another 35 degrees like that. 35 degrees here. So it means if it's 35 degrees here, it's simply 360 minus 35 degrees, because I'm moving all the way like this. So it means this is also equal to sine brackets 360 minus 215 degrees. That's how I use those quadrants. So this is sine what? What's 360 minus, sorry, minus 35 here. So this is 35, I don't know why I'm writing that. And what is 316 minus 35? It's sine what? 300 and what? 25, is that correct? Yes. So check in your calculator, if you do sine 215, sine three, whatever they are the same. Is the issue of quadrants, do you now get it? How we find that? Because it's important now when you're finding angles within the range, that's why I'm, sometimes you might skip that foundation. It's very important to know that. So sine theta, I showed you how you find that from quadrants. Why sine theta is, so if you have any angle less than 90 degrees, you can subtract from 180 to get the other one. Is that clear now? Tawana, we are making use of quadrants. Let's look at you at cos. We also make use of quadrants, cos theta. So the graph of cos theta, we know that cos zero is one. Eh? You can check from my calculator. Cos zero is one. Then cos 90 should be zero. Then cos 180 should be negative one. Then cos 270 should be zero. Cos 360 is one. Clear? Angela, you are there. Now look yeah. at this. Let's divide into quadrants, the same thing that we have just talked about. So first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So where is tan positive, of course, sorry, where is it positive? First quadrant and which one? Fourth. And fourth quadrant, like this. So which means if I say cos 30 degrees, like this. And I also have another 30 degrees there. See so this 30 degrees now is given by all the way from that to that. So it's 360 minus 30 degrees. So it means cos 30 degrees is equal to cos 330 degrees. Is that clear? On the quadrants. Now, if you were to do the negative quadrants, 
So if I, if I have cos, uh, so it's an object. If I have cos 127 degrees, 127 degrees. Mm -hmm. So you have an idea. Cos 127 is this side. So if I have 127, like this, what angle should I draw here? 90 degrees. You know, or you can say 127 from 180, what do you get? What's 127 minus 180? 53. 53 degrees. Okay. So it means I can also have 53 degrees this way. Let's see if it works. 53 degrees like this. Huh? So now if it's 50 degrees, both are saying all the way to this is to 127 or all the way 180 plus, what's 180 plus 53? 180 plus 53? 233. 233. So you're saying cos 233, let's see, negative something, cos 127. Same answer. Is that clear? Clear now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then tan theta, how do you draw the graph of tan theta? Why is it go to tan theta? Tan theta. Not a difficult graph, huh? I know it can confuse my students. So this is zero, 90, 180, 270, and 360. But you realize that if you say tan zero, it gives you an error. So tan can never touch this line. Is that true? Mm -hmm. So if it is something like this, very, it comes very close, they are very high number. If you do 89 point something, 89.5, it is a very high number. It will never touch this line. Is that true? Sure. Then I think it never touches this line again. Do tan two seven? They should give you an error. Is that correct? An error. So it never touches that. Then like this, it follows through. Something like this. Clear now. Then there, I'm sure your guess is correct that it should be simply this phase here, then it was going to go the other way, just like this. Make sense? So where is tan positive? First quadrant and third quadrant. Tan is positive in the first and third. So if I say tan 27 degrees, 27 degrees here, then in the third, third quadrant, I can have a 27 degrees, which means it will be tan 180 plus 27. Huh? So tan 27 is also equal to tan 180 plus 27. And what's 180 plus 27? <coughs> to what? 207. Mm -hmm. Is that clear now, everyone? how we use yes, the quadrants. Sir. Okay. But then let's go to the other things. Then there's an important identity, which you all know, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. It's there in your booklet. Huh? Is that clear? Then before I even go further, I should know that one over cos theta is known as what? What special name is given? The what's one over cos theta? One over cos theta, Maxim. One over cos is sec what? I thought you knew that. Sec theta. Are you together? One over cos theta is sec theta. What about the one over sine? It's cos sec. Yes, 
cosec theta, the opposite, huh? cosec theta. Then tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Then cot theta, cot theta is one over tan theta, the inverse of this, which means it's cos theta over sine theta. Now let's go back to this. Let's divide everything by sine squared and see what happens. If I divide by sine squared, I'll have one plus cos squared theta over sine squared theta is equal to one over sine squared theta. But I said cos theta over, that is cot what? Cot theta. So this means one plus cot squared theta is equal to, I said one over sine theta is known as cosec theta. So this is cosec squared theta. Clear? You don't have to memorize this. You just have to know how to form this. Is that clear now? Which brings us to double angles, to identities, huh? proving identities. Okay. We'll do 15 more minutes. Just look at simple questions on how we prove. Mm-hmm. Angela, yeah, there. Angela, yeah, there. Yes. Yes, I'm here. That's good. I thought we had lost you. You are very quiet. Okay, like I promised. Mm, trigonometry. What? Wait a minute. I actually saved it. What happened? I just just wait. Just give me a minute. To I think unless what was it serving and mm, save it in the wrong folder. Okay, wait a minute. Five point two check on it. Oh no. I was saving in the <laughs> I guess fine. I made a mistake. I was saving in the OLEF. I don't know what I was thinking. It's fine. I'll retrieve them. That's why I could not find them. I'll save them before the lesson. Okay, there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see how many marks? Four marks. Prove the identity that, so what I always encourage students is do the long side. It's easy. From this, it'll be difficult to go back to this. Huh? You want to prove the identity for marks there. One over, so let's do that okay. together. So we can see your whiteboard. You can see my? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we can see your screen. What happened? Oh, I stopped sharing. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. can you see it? So it's so that you, yeah. you are following. Okay. You can now see Angela, my whiteboard. Yeah. One over cos theta. So we're doing this, this identity. Minus cos theta over one plus sine theta. I said it would be very difficult to prove from this to prove that side. Always prove the, to work with the long side. Huh? one of the tricks. So there you can combine this, huh? so that you can have one denominator, huh? which is cos theta brackets, one plus sine theta, like this. Over, if I say cos theta into that, I have one plus what? One plus sine theta, I'm sure you agree, minus, if I divide this into this, I will have cos was cos theta. So cos theta, look at this, this into this cos theta times that. So it will be minus cos squared what? Theta. Are you agreeing? 
or disagree. Then what do we do? We are almost there. What do you do? Who, would th who knows what we do? We can change this cos squared. Remember the identity? One plus what? So it means cos squared theta from that identity is equal to one minus sine squared theta. Remember I said one is equal to cos squared theta plus sine squared. So let's substitute into this. So it means one plus sine theta minus brackets one minus sine squared theta like this over cos theta brackets one plus sine theta. Let's remove the brackets. So they were going to have, if we remove the brackets, this will become positive. So I'll have sine squared, there's a reason why I'm doing this, sine squared theta was this time that, then this one will be a negative one. So this will cancel, can you see that? Minus one and one will cancel. Did you see that? Then I'll simply have this. Are we agreeing with? Over cos theta brackets, one plus sine theta. Factorize, factor out sine theta. So sine theta brackets, one plus sine, or oh, I could have done the other way, but I want it to be exactly like this. Just the same, like this. I hope you are following. So the one sine theta is this one, then the sine squared is that. O over cos theta brackets, one plus sine theta. Can you see that you can now cancel? Then you are left with what? Sine theta over here done, over cos theta. We say this is equal to tan theta. Clear now? Making sense, Angelo? Yes, it's making sense. Okay, so then you get your four bucks for free. Then let's go to the next part. Hence, or the next thing, solve. You can solve from the if you use this, because you now know that this whole thing there, this whole thing here, gives us what? Tan theta. So I'm saying tan theta plus two is equal to zero. Move this the other side. So tan theta is equal to minus two. Then what is tan theta? Is arctan of minus two. What do you get? What's arctan of minus two? Arctan of minus two in degrees, not in radians, was the range there is degrees. So what do you get? Minus 63.4349. Minus, not one decimal place, it's okay. Minus 63 point. Oh. 63.4. Yes. Then let's use the quadrants now because the answer has to be within this range. Where did we say it's positive? We said tan is positive there and in there. If you remember my graph, or you have to draw the graph again. Remember it's positive in this and that. So it's negative way, there and there. That's why it's negative, which means I can do the 63 that you're talking about, 63.4 here. So it would be, what's 180 minus 63.4? 180 minus 63.4, what do you get? Use your calculators, 180 minus 63.4, it's one what? 116.6. 116.6. Or it's also negative there, so it's 63.4. So what's 360 minus 63.4? 360.296.6. 296.6. Okay, wait a moment. If you do, okay, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope you're giving me correct values here. Like turn, wait a moment. 63.4. 
will be due to the time. Right. Yeah, it's correct because it gives me negative 1.99 something, which is close to two. Huh? Remember, we are around. It makes sense. I was just testing this answers. Now, prove the identity. Again, we work with this, Angela, this side, huh? so that we, we, we get that. Huh? So, what's the first thing that we do there? What would be the first thing? Maybe we can use this with more space apps. So, Tawana, what do you think? What do you do first? We want to prove that identity. What do we do? We want to go back to this. What is tan? I thought everyone now knew. Tan is what? Sine what? Sine oh, x over. Uh, I thought you were going to think like that. Plus what? Plus one. So I can sort out this first. Then I can sort out that later. Or I can sort them at the same time. I don't want to sort them at the same time. Let's combine it, the numerator, so that it's one, one thing. So if you combine it, cos theta like this. So it's cos x over. This simply is sine x. Was that into that is one. Then one times that. So it's plus cos x. We now have our numerator here. Let's sort the denominator. So the denominator is sine multiplied by what? Sine x multiplied by sine x over cos x. Can you see that? Plus what? Cos x. Make sense? Let's sort it so that it's one denominator. So that's cos x brackets. So if you simply multiply this, it's one. So you get sine squared x sine times x. Then, then that into th this, well, this is as good as one. So it's plus cos squared. Can you see that? Uh, see how nice this is? Then we know what? We know that this gives us, what does this give us? The special identity? One. One. So this is one over cos x. But remember we're dividing. So if we are dividing by this denominator, we multiply by the inverse of this, which is multiplying by cos what? x. This cancels, that cancels. You are done. Make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hence, solve. And solve the equation that is equal to that. Okay, so we now know this. Huh? So it means sine, we now use this, plus cos x is equal to 3 sine x minus 2 cos what? x like this. Clear now. Move everything to all cos on one side, that's what I would suggest. So there I will have sine x minus three sine x is equal to negative two cos x. Bring that the other side minus cos x like this. Then this one gives you minus two sine x is equal to negative three cos x. Negative divided by negative is positive. Huh? Then divide this by cos both sides. So that I'll have sine, sine x over cos x is equal to three over two. Negative, negative gives you that. And this is what, tan, I'm sure you know that. So tan x is equal to three over two. So x is equal to arctan of two, three over two, what do you get? What answer do you get? It's a positive. 56.3. 56.3. 3. 56 Is that the only answer? No. Because what range are we given? There. Oh, is that the same question? And so there. Oh, that's, that's wrong. If you do this, 
you lose. If they say this, it means your calculator should be in radians. Can you put your calculator in radians? Yes. They want the answer in radians. That's why they said from zero to x, x is less than or equal to two pi, 360. So what's your answer in radians? Anyway, it's a positive answer. So we know that first quadrant and third quadrant. So what answer? In quadrants. What do you get, Tawana? Did you put your call in radius? Um, I got zero point nine eight. Zero point before, before I use the quadrants. No, I'm saying the quadrants. Zero point nine eight. No, you can't. You get zero from. The degrees are 56.7. Now take off the quadrants now. Actor, I haven't used the hmm? I haven't done the quadrants. Oh, are you sure? Your calculator, yeah, can you turn it to quadrants? Do you know how to turn it? Which version of calculator is that? Um, it's a cashew. Which odd one? Okay. I no, don't use a cardio. Can someone tell him how to? I don't use a cardio. Someone who uses a cardio, eh? how to turn it? I'm not, I've never used a cardio. I'm sure this guy is a Maxine. I think she said Max. Can you tell him how to change the calculator? At A level, you need to know. That's one thing that you need to change it to, to radians. Or... Yes, to radians. I, I can change um, it to radians. Press, oh, you can change it to radians. Shift. Yeah, so if you change it to rad radians, Tawana, now, then calculate this. So now do a turn of brackets because you check the range. If they give you the range in this, it means this is radians. You can't do degrees when they've got a range like this. You lose max. If a range is like this, your calculator has to be in degrees. So always check that in an exam. Are we together? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So what do you get? Maxine, what did you get? Point nine eight. I'm saying zero point nine eight. Oh, we said it's positive in the first and third quadrant. So if it's third, it's pi, which is one eighty pi plus that answer here. So the other answer is actually pi plus your zero point nine eight. I'm not sure what that gives you. That's the other third, the second answer. Then. Is that clear? Now? Isn't the answer meant to be in degrees because the no. radiance was meant to be for the previous question? Uh uh, which previous question? This one. Oh, I'm reading. Oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong question. Yeah, reading sorry. the wrong question. I'll get it. So, you are reading the yeah. next question now. We are at this question. It's clear on question two. So, it has to be radiance. Then, this one now, it's in degrees. Then, what do we do there? Uh, there's no it means we have to convert this to what to cos huh? but we know this one so we said sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to one so so let's plug in there it's four brackets we are now using cos squared huh? which is one minus sine what squared x huh? plus oh what am i even doing one plus cos squared huh? One minus cos squared, sorry about it. Because everything has to be in terms of cos. So it's four brackets, one minus cos squared x plus eight cos x minus seven is equal to zero. Clear now. Remove the brackets. Four minus four cos squared x plus eight cos x minus seven is equal to zero. Okay, now, then negative four cos squared x plus eight x, this is a positive four, so plus four minus seven is equal to zero. So it means negative four cos squared x plus cos x, there you get what minus three is equal to zero. 
then divide everything by negative. So I have four cos squared x. What? Why did why did the cos disappear? So whatever. So plus. So this becomes a negative, huh? Because I'm simply I'm sure you saw how you could have done it a different way. You still get the same answer. So this is positive cos squared x minus cos x negative times negative is plus three is equal to zero. Clear now. Now to solve this, I said you can say let that be equal to that. Yeah? Or you check if I can say let um, y be equal to cos x. Well, this means cos x times cos x. So it's 4y squared minus 8y plus 3 is equal to 0. Clear now. Can it be factorized? Can it be factorized? Can it be factorized? It looks like it can be factorized. Huh? Can it be factorized or not? Four mm -hmm. y, y three, twelve. No. Two y. Two y. If we do this, two y. Two y. And we have a negative three here. Negative one. It's correct, huh? 4y squared minus 6y minus 2y minus 8y. You see that? Well, we could have done the long way, but it's not necessary. You check if it's going to be factorized. Then that means straight away y is equal to half. Or if you do this, 3, 3 over 2. So you are saying y is, y is cos theta. Cos x is equal to half or three over two but cos can never be greater than one to give you an error so you eliminate that so x is equal to arc cos what's arc cos of half that's 60 degrees arc cos of half what do you get 60 60 or what? Because that's not the only answer. It's positive, cos is positive in the first and last quadrant. So it's all 360 minus 60, which is 300 degrees. Well, they want the range. If you lose a mark there, we're not writing that the other angle there. Clear? Or not clear? Yeah. Which means you are now sorted for a homework. Huh? <laughs> Prove that this is equal to that. So your homework, Angela, your first homework is number seven. I'm going to send, Angela added to you to the grouper. Number six, number seven, And number eight, all together. That's our homework. Six, seven, eight. I'll send just now. Okay. We'll see you. Thank you. Okay, cool. Those are doing chemistry. We'll see you tomorrow. The others. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay.